Hi guys, welcome back to the Oz Connection. I'm here as your host and with my good friends and co-hosts, Ms. Erica Oliveira. Hi. Welcome back, Erica. It's nice to see you. It's been a while. Oh yeah, it's good to be back. And we have another good friend from OzCon, Mr. Nate Barlow. Hey Nate, how are you? Hello, how are you? So Nate, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Because people are sick and tired of listening to me and Erica all the time, <laughs> but they may not know who you are. Uh, well, the big picture, I'm a filmmaker based in Los Angeles. I've mm -hmm. uh, been a member of the club for most of my life. You know, grew up going to the Munchkin Convention on the on the East Coast. And, you know, family, kids, took a time off from uh, conventions and stuff like that and started returning just a few years ago to OzCon. And uh, during the pandemic one, created a video of Hollywood Bomb about... Uh, uh, Oz, uh, the Oz Film Manufacturing Company and Bomb's uh, time out here in LA. I'll put the link down below for Nate's great Bomb and Hollywood link. It's one of our most popular videos. It's a really great view. Mm -hmm. He also did like a HD upscale of one of the Bomb Oz films as well, which I'll also post for you guys. Have a look. What I want to do is introduce both Nate and Erica to you as this year's OzCon co-chairs. So do you want to just quickly tell everybody when OzCon is this year, Erica? Uh, this year, it's going to be July 28th to the 30th at, at Kellogg West, same as the last few years. The difference is this year it will be our first year post-COVID, the three days. Last year, if for those of you who re recall, um, it was only a one-day convention just to ease us mm -hmm. back after covid but this year we are back uh it is three days again and we have a lot of awesome content ready for you guys um our traditional stuff as well as a lot of new content and we're, we're here today to talk about some of that with you oh brilliant so yeah there was a couple of years we went virtual during covid and so this is now back to a free day convention. So it's a little bit of a, a vacation, really, for people who want to come along to you guys over in Pomona at Kellogg. Okay, guys, so I believe you've got a really quite exciting theme this year, something I'm quite passionate about. What, what's the theme, Erica, for OzCon this year? Oh, yeah, this year it's we're going to be covering animation and Oz. Animation is such a versatile medium. Um, for storytelling, um, whether it's stop motion, cell animation, computer animation, name it. And Oz has been told through animation in so many ways over the last century, but we barely talk about it. Um, maybe in passing, uh, maybe mentioned in a, in a panel or two, a talk or two. So I wanted to put a spotlight on that uh, because animation is just as valid a, a medium as any other form of entertainment so i mean, I mean oz so really lends itself to an, oz really lends itself to animation I, and i know quite yeah. a few of us particularly in the 80s grew up with things like sinar oz which was a Amer you know a japanese cartoon that was redubbed um but do you is there anything really different and new and exciting that I've been hearing, Nate, that we might be getting at OzCon this year? Yes, we will have the public premiere of the latest, the newest Oz animated project. It's stop motion animated. It's called The Tim Woods, uh, directed by Nick uh, Botwell and uh, Mozilla uh, Duran. And they've been working on it for many years. And uh, uh, we will have the public premiere of it this summer at OzCon. It's absolutely stunning, uh, and some people in here may have contributed to their Kickstarter, and it was covered. Uh, it's been mentioned in the Bomb Bugle, and uh, but now it's done. Oh, cool! So pretty much, you're only going to be able to see this for the first time ever at OzCon in July. However, you can see the trailer right now.
that looks really neat, guys. I'm really excited. I don't know. I'm about so you. excited for this. Beautiful. Yeah. This is it this is the beauty so of OzCon that you you get to bag these Oz premieres out there. So fabulous. And then next up is Oz and the Musical. I know this is by a friend of OzCon, which is Ryan Bunch, and also he's heavily involved in the International Wizard of Oz Club. Do one of you want to pick up in terms of what this book's about and what Ryan will be doing at the Oz convention? Well, the Oz and the Musical deals with uh, how Oz has you know been married to the musical form throughout its uh life going back to the 1903 stage musical it's now obviously 39 mgm so many other films and how it uh you know both oz and the musical form uh really speak to the concept of the american utopia and both what they include and what they exclude oh cool Nate, I believe you're working on a little bit of an animation presentation or video or something. Well, yes. Uh, so obviously, it's a convention about animation. It would be somewhat odd if we didn't show some interesting or rare animation. Uh, as I mentioned, Eshba there, which is why they consider you know the first Oz animated piece, with the exception of the uh, stop motion bits in the in the Oz film manufacturing uh, company film. So we're gonna have a little a block where we show Eshba, but also in 1937, there was an animator named Ken McClellan, and some people may know this, some may not, uh, who was trying to get a project off the ground. It took many forms, initially being the animation, then maybe it was maybe Puppet, uh, had uh, Mod Bomb's uh, support behind it too. And uh, his, uh, she liked what he was doing more. She was obviously notoriously not a fan of uh, Walt Disney, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, it would never it was never it never found financing and never was made, but the pitch book survived and and in, in the hands of a uh, of a uh, one of our Oz community our OzCon community Lee Speth, and he has graciously allowed me to uh, scan it at high resolution, and I have actually uh, done some proof of concept animations, uh, taking pieces of that and giving a sense of what it may have looked like a little bit. Not doing a full piece there, there isn't enough to it, and some of it, it would take a massive amount to do that, but mm -hmm. taking some of the little individual pieces and giving a sense of uh, what this might have been like. And so they're going to have this little block of a very rare early or tended to be early Oz animation. So this will essentially then be a premiere then. No one will have seen this before. So some people may have seen the drawings, which aren't really out there in the wild too much and has been touched upon at previous OzCons, but they'll never have seen this animated in any way before. That's correct. This will be the first time uh, it's ever been seen in, in, in any shape, way, shape, or form in an actual moving image. Oh, wow. Yes. That's going to be really yeah, cool. Yeah, so our attendees are going to be in for a real treat. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a, an additional reason to be there. So what about for book fans then? We usually there's a centennial or a, you know an anniversary of some of the many, many Oz books. Are we got any anniversaries coming up this year? Definitely. Um, this year marks the 100th anniversary of the publishing of The Cowrie Lion of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. Uh, so it's going to be marked by um, Peter Hanf um, doing a hour long talk on, on the literary merits on, of the book, mm -hmm. which there are a few. And I know Pete is a founding member of the OzCon has come up with many, many an essay and many a in-depth academic uh, presentations on the Oz book series. So it should be as impressive as always. Those of you who are fans of Ruth Plumley Thompson and and some of her books, I know um, some some of the more memorable characters like Not a Bit More are are featured in Cowardly Lion. So you're definitely not going to want to miss this talk. Oh, I mean, absolutely. And if you've never read the Cowardly Lion of Oz, I mean, if you've never even heard of who Ruth Plumley Thompson is, OzCon is the place to go to find out a little bit bit more. We've covered Ruth Plumley Thompson before on the channel. Not not in, in a great deal, but you can now get the Cowardly Lion of Oz. Uh, it's now out of copyright, so it's free to be able to get a copy. Or you can get an original or a later edition from our sponsor, Cindy Ragney's wonderful books of Oz.com. So 
I, it was always a thing for me to read the late, that particular Oz book that's being covered at the convention. So that's always a good thing to do. If it's a way of you getting into that world and reading that book, then absolutely now's the time. It makes great kindling. <laughs> Erica is not the greatest of fans of Ruth Plumley Thompson. Uh, I certainly do like Thompson, but that's a whole other debate for a whole other episode. I okay. love that one. <laughs> yeah, I I think it'll always be a, a good debate, but I, I think Thompson was definitely responsible for getting us to an all series carry on for too long. But yeah, we could easily talk an hour about Thompson. Because... I think isn't the, the the debate we had um at one of our virtual cons up up on Oz Connection? It isn't right now, but I may get it out after this episode because I just need to f- edit a little couple of little bits where someone behaved very naughtily <laughs> on there, Erica. Uh, But I will get it out in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for that, guys. It sounds really exciting. So I I guess one of the things I wanted to cover right now is OzCon's been running for nearly 59 years, and it's ran by volunteers. It's not not not-for-profit. I ran OzCon for five years, and it was an incredible experience. But it's really, really difficult to do because when we don't make a profit, none of us get paid. And what we do is everything comes from the fees from tickets, but we keep that budget really, really tight so that it's not difficult for people to come to the convention. We keep that cost as low as possible. But what we really need to give you a fabulous OzCon, an OzCon that can put on more elaborate displays and talkers and speakers is if we get donations to the Oz Convention Fund, which goes totally to all of the programming. And since COVID, OzCon is recovering back to its normal levels. As Erica and Nate have pointed out, this is going to be the first three-day con now in nearly three, four years. And we really could do with your donations to help lift this fund and make it the best OzCon experience it's been since before COVID. So Erica, how can people donate to OzCon? So there are a few ways, actually. One is if you go to the International Wizard of Oz Club website, uh, and that's pretty that's a pretty good way because you can write it off on your taxes. When you make your donation, just make sure to indicate that it's for OzCon so they know where the donations are going to. Another way is to donate through brown paper tickets where, where you register for con at and another way is through our Facebook page. Uh, and that those are also get collected through through the International Wizard of Oz Club as well. Oh, cool. So if you donate to the International Wizard of Oz Club, Americans can offset this against their taxes. What I will do is I will put the links down below. If you go to Facebook, the links, I believe, Nate, are very prominent at the top of the page. So if you were to join... The OzCon page on Facebook, you'll be able to see the links there. That will take you directly to. Is that right, Nate? Correct. That is correct. So it's really easy. Even if it's it's 10 bucks or more, anything will just help because it means that the more budget that the Oz Convention has, it makes life so much easier to for the future of the convention and to give you a really, really great con. So please support in any way that you can. Thank you, guys. <laughs> So let's get back to the schedule then. You talked about some of the new stuff that we're getting. We, we've had a conversation around your theme in animation and some of the fabulous authors. Now, OzCon's been running for 59 years, which is a really long time, and it always has a mixture of new and traditional. But what does traditional OzCon look like, Erica? Uh, among some of the traditional programming, we have our costume contest, which every year on Saturday mornings, everybody dresses up as some of their favorite Oz characters. We have Ozmas and Dorothy's and (laughs) wizards. Uh, We even have some lions running around. Um, One year we had a couple of lion eggs Uh, and everybody gets so creative and and we have prizes for the best adult, best child, best group costumes. And we have so much fun. People get into character and (laughs) It's it's amazing what people come up with, and and it's it's always one of my favorite part, parts of OzCon. I, yeah. The costume contest has been there from the very very early days, and you can mm-hmm. you can literally be any character you want. I, I've been an MGM Billy Burke Glinda with a beard and had a fabulous time. It's you know 
we are a really, really inclusive bunch, dressed mm-hmm. to impress, be whichever Oz character or mashup of an Oz character that you want. Yeah, I was a steampunk Dorothy one year. The year before that, I was Jelly a Jam. Yeah, it's, it's it's super fun. It's always a really good way to start us. Is it Saturday that you're running the costume contest? Saturday yep. morning. Sa- First thing Saturday morning. That sounds like a lot of fun. What what else then? So I know traditionally there's thing, things like quizzes. Is that still a thing? Oh yeah. Um we all we always have a couple of quizzes um run by our, our beloved quiz master, Eric Javon. Um we this year we are having two uh, at least two quizzes. Um uh, our mass our beginner's quiz, which is usually focused on one books, and since Cowardly Lion is our centennial book, it will be on that. And our master quiz, which will be on all 40 books. So if you think you have the medal, get so start brushing up on your knowledge and come show us what you got. Real. Nate, I know for a lot of fans, and, and people might not know this, but there's always a good reason to come to OzCon, which is the auction. Do you want to talk a little bit about the auction and what that's about? Obviously, you know, many, if not most people in the OzCon and Oz community as a whole are collectors. And so, you know, the auction has always been part of OzCon and of any of most of the conventions. And on Saturday afternoon, we have, you know, the main room is taken over and there will be Oz items of, from all parts of the collecting world, whether books, movies, you name it, and it can be a great opportunity to pick up something uh, at a deal or something uh, uniquely rare that doesn't necessarily come up uh, on eBay or, or in stores uh, for your collection. Uh, Bill Thompson will be uh, the auctioneer this year, and it's always uh, always an exciting uh, exciting time and exciting way to get something uh, for your collection. So I know the auction is run by the National Wizard of Oz Club now. On my shelf behind me, I have several first editions and vintage editions of the Oz series that I have had from the Oz auctions, and I've had them at a song in comparison sometimes to on eBay. So you can get some really great finds, and you can build your Oz collection. So even if you're new to Oz, you're going to see things that are really going to open your eyes to the world, and the Oz auction is a really good place to start out or get even better copies of previous books that you've had. So it's it's something that I always would sit down when I wasn't running the convention and and go for the auction. And people, you know, some things are highly, highly sought after. And some some of the Oz folks will be kind if you're really, really after a piece. I know one year I was desperate to get hold of a particular book. So not completely giving it to me for for nothing. But I know sometimes people will, if they see you're passionate about getting an item, will will let you get it. Neat. What about, so talking about selling books and increasing your Oz collection, Nate, what about the dealer's room? Is that still a thing? Yes, it is. Uh, Mama's Bazaar, as it's uh, sometimes known. There is a separate dealer's room where booksellers uh, uh, or or other uh, Oz item sellers can uh, have a table, uh, as well as as many of the authors will will sell books in there. Uh, So it's a good way to, if you've seen a presentation, to pick up a copy of one of their books and you get it signed. And uh, this year, our dealer's room is being run by Cindy Ragney, who, as we mentioned, is uh, the owner of the Wonderful Books of Oz and a convention sponsor. But it's, you know, also a place to pick up uh, anything from something rare to uh, the new or, you know, it's often specialized Oz art, you know, handcrafted and certainly from across the, the gamut of, uh, you know, of space. Yeah, I mean, I've seen books, jewelry, like bespoke made Oz jewelry. The, you know, there's a plethora of stuff. You're going to get some very rare items that you'll only get by coming to the convention. Some of the dealers that come don't have online stores, and some of them do. And and if you also want to be a vendor at the Oz convention, I will put in a link down below where you can go and reach out to Cindy to get a vendor table as well. So it, it's a, usually the dealer's room's on for, for a good portion of the convention. So you've got just as much time for entertainment as you have to shop. And I know Erica loves to shop. Yeah. And I've gotten some beautiful piece, pieces from the jeweler, 
from the jeweler sell jewelry sellers there, and from and from Cindy as well. I've gotten I, last year I got a really cool um, original Vogelug pin that are hard to come by. Well, that's really neat. I mean, I know also in the dealer's room is where registration is, and if you're registering in full, you will get a bespoke OzCon bag, and there'll be a program book. So there are things included anyway. You'll get to see all of this, but have your wallets ready because you're going to want to collect more than you're going to be able to take home, to be fair. Yeah, three mm -hmm. years ago, my first one back, or is it, I guess, four years? Yeah, four years ago. Two years have been right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, picked in the uh, picked up a, a sketch by John Arneal. Oh wow! Sketch. So, you know, I mean, I one one year because I live in the UK, I went over the weight on my luggage that they were going to charge me a hundred dollars um to take it over. But fortunately, I got a really nice person at the airport who let it slide. So just just you know, there's there's going to be more than more more than you want more than you need but you know that's another thing if you're a collector we don't care just just cram it in and take it home okay so you want to come to oscon how can you join us at oscon erica is it easy and straightforward oh yeah it's super easy um you just go to osconinternational.com and click on registration just scroll on down to the registration options i highly recommend the full con and meals package and don't forget to sign up for for the Saturday night banquet where we dress up to the nines and have a night to remember. So, so the, don't forget the link will be in the description below and it'll take you right there. So go ahead and get tickets as soon as possible. Yeah. That's a, that's a good thing to remember is, you know, the convention, you know, it is three days. You, you can purchase your meals. It's a big part of OzCon is the socializing I've made some of the best friends just from sitting at people at a table, Erica, Nate, just having a chat about Oz because these are your people. If you like Oz, these are the people you want to be sat around a table and you can sit at a different table with a different person and everyone will talk to you. So that it's as much for me about OzCon as it is about the presentations as well. Real talk, OzCon has been actually really good for my mental health because I've made so many friends. Yeah, it's it's and it's it's easy to, to connect because you've got ours as a, as a starting point. So, what about staying on site? So, is, are the hotel rooms available for Oscom? Definitely, um, we have a hotel block um, with Kellogg yeah. West um, ready ready to go. So, you got to call the hotel. Um, it's it's nine zero nine eight six nine two 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 it's also on the registration page so you don't need to memorize that number or anything um single occupancy rooms are available at 109 dollars per night uh, double occupancy at 119 per night um if you want a suite if you want to get crazy um you can you can ask them over the phone so um they so just call up call up the hotel that unfortunately there is no no um, website link um, and they will set you up they are Kellogg West is a great hotel and they are very accommodating and and we absolutely love them there and they have amazing food you will love them there oh, I mean the hotel is up on top of a hill there's some beautiful surroundings it, again it, it's all part of it there's there's little pools if you want to take a dip in the pool you know, again, this is this isn't just a convention. This is a vacation for most of us for that whole mm -hmm. weekend. And, and this is literally the are, only vacation I take all year. <laughs> and those prices are, are pretty reasonable as well. For the, you know, they do keep the prices uh, quite low with it being linked to the Kellogg University. It's on a college campus, so it's it's really well maintained. Fabulous. So make sure you join us. Get yourselves over to www.ozconinternational.com. Check out the dates, check out the prices. And I'm sure Erica and Nate are looking forward to inviting you and meeting you. Absolutely. Can't wait to see everybody there. Old friends and new. So join us again on the next episode where we go a little bit more in depth on some of the other elements at OzCon in July. So we will see you again on the next show. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, <laughs> everyone.